الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم Respected Imam, brothers and sisters here at Masjid Al-Ghufran in Tamantun, Dr. Ismail in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is always a pleasure to come back to Masjid Al-Ghufran where I have lectured several times in the past and I thank you for your kind invitation. Our subject tonight is an unusual one and one that requires great reflection and insight. What is the role of Constantinople in Akhir Zaman? The methodology that is required is one which was taught by my teacher of blessed memory Mawlana Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah and if you do not have the proper methodology don't bother you're not going to arrive at the correct conclusion this methodology has been explained several times in the past and tonight we should not spend too much time repeating what we have done in the past except to say that you do not take any verse of the Quran in isolation and do not take any hadith in isolation by itself to try to get knowledge and make judgment because sometimes you can be wrong the proper methodology requires that you do homework. The proper methodology is to collect all the data pertaining to the subject. First from the Quran and when you acquire that from the Quran you must bring them together in a harmonious whole, integrated whole and for that you have to discover what he calls a system of meaning and that's not a task for boys <laughs> you need to have you need to have a high status in knowledge to be able to locate the system of meaning of a subject in the Quran and then you move to the hadith and then you integrate into the body that you have those are hadith which are harmonious with that system of meaning and so your body of data will be constantly growing. All of this from the Quran and all of these coming from the Hadith. And when you get a Hadith which is in conflict, <laughs> in conflict with all that you have acquired from the Quran, from the Hadith, you ignore that Hadith. Ignore it. And so when Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam has referred to a city by name as he had on Constantinople he has referred to the city of Constantinople by name in Arabic Constantinia these words came out of his blessed lips Constantinia <laughs> so when you find a hadith which indirectly is referring to the city and you have to interpret it to be Constantinople you know this is not in conformity with what I call the literary sunnah 
the literary sunnah that there is consistency if the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is constantly referring to the city by name how come over here he speaks about the city and does not mention the name and this is why when I deal with the subject of Constantinople don't come to me and tell me oh but there's that hadith why aren't you mentioning that hadith <laughs> Because over there you are interpreting that the city is Constantinople. So this is our methodology. An akhirul zaman is the age which will culminate with the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam described him to us 1400 years ago. A man who would be a Jew, that's not an anti-Semitic statement, he's a Jew. A young man, powerfully built, with curls at the side, the Orthodox Jews curls. And this man will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah. That's Akhiru Zaman. And uh, in order for him to convince the Jews that he is the Messiah, he has to be ruling over a state of Israel <laughs> which will say Wait, this is holy Israel of Nabi Dawood and Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam David and Solomon and that Israel must be ruling the world <laughs> only then can he claim to be successful as uh, the impersonation of the true Messiah. He would be the false Messiah. He would be Dajjal, Al-Masih Dajjal. Oh, oh, everybody knows that. This is common knowledge. And when he makes that declaration, at that time, <coughs> the attack on Mecca and Medina will occur. And he come from the east. Twenty times the Prophet ﷺ pointed to the east. And he will ride on a, on a donkey. And the donkey will travel as fast as the clouds. And the donkey will have his ears stretched out wide. Hmm? Religious symbolism. Oh, Brother Imran, didn't you study geography? Huh? The Prophet said that the child will come from the East. And in your book, your bestseller, Jerusalem in the Quran, you say that when the child was released on the island, remember the island? No? You don't remember the island? Oh my. Well, read, <laughs> read Jerusalem in the Quran. Hadith speaks about an island. And Imran who says the island is Britain. And Britain is the West. And the Prophet said, You come from the East. Didn't Imran Hussein study geography? <laughs> yeah. He will come from the East at that time when his mission is completed a day like a year has been completed a day like a month is completed a day like a week is finished and now now all his days are like your days so he'll now be in our world of space and time Dajjal it is at this time that he'll be ruling the world from Jerusalem and at this time the attack will take place with fighter aircraft our interpretation but those who insist that no a flying donkey is a flying donkey and they want to wait for the flying donkey we have to respect their view when we interpret we do not do it in a dogmatic way when we interpret we say Allahu Alam Allah knows best so we say it's a fighter aircraft, the flying donkey. 
and uh, the attack will come from the east but the angels will block the attack uh, I have a booklet at the back uh, entitled Med Medina 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 to Nabi returns to center stage in Akhirul Zaman it's only about 25 pages long and that booklet describes this event when the attack on Medina takes place but then after that when the angels block him then the Israeli attack on Syria will take place so we know Israel is going to attack Syria the jar will be there and then Damascus becomes the center of the world because the jar is in Damascus and Imam al-Mahdi is in Damascus he is inside the masjid he is outside and then Nabi Isa Islam comes down in the masjid Damascus so now you know why why Damascus is so important you know why this bloodshed and so on is going on in Syria now why because this is the culmination Damascus uh, the end time but our subject is Constantinople and why we recognize that there is a countdown in Akhiru Zaman the countdown to the final culmination the countdown or the last stage commenced when? it commenced with Surah to Yunus Surah to Yunus when Allah says Ba'ad a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Al-an Now Fir'an Now Wa qad asayta qabl And before this you were in arrogant and obstinate rebellion Wa kunta min al-mufsideen And you were oppressing the people Huh? Now, when you are under the water, when you are drowning, now you are declaring your faith for Allah. Allah is speaking. Because that's what he did eh? underneath the water. For Yawma Nunajji Kabi Badanik, this day, we have decided to preserve your physical body. Litakuna liman khalfaka aya that your physical body, when it resurfaces in the historical process, when it is discovered, which I believe occurred around 1897 somewhere around there if I'm wrong somebody please send me an email and correct me so that your physical body which we have preserved when it, is re when it resurfaces in the historical process would function as a sign for a people to come after you that they because they live the way you live will die the way you die with a divine intervention over there it was take your rod and strike the water and then we parted the water miracle and this time it will be another miracle for a people to come after you they're going to be punished the same way this one will be the return of Nabi Isa Islam. and these people are going to die the same way the Pharaoh died meaning at the last moment <laughs> when death is staring them in their eyes then and only then will they recognize that Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the Arab who was not a Jew the Arab he was indeed a true prophet of the one God like Abraham alayhi salam like Moses alayhi salam at that moment they will recognize that the Quran is the word of the one true God who sent the Torah who sent Injil 
au sein euh, des euh, Torah in Deen, Zamur. And now he said, the Quran, it is the word of the one true God. And that this man, the son of Maryam, was not, when I always have been laughing, was not a bastard, was not a false pretender, that this is indeed the true Messiah. And then they will die, <laughs> knowing that they're going into the hellfire. Hmm? This is how it, history will repeat itself. Who are they? Banu Israel, the Jewish people. Those Jewish people who are oppressing us, waging war on Islam, and who created the oppressor state of Israel. This is the countdown beginning around 1897. This is the countdown period. But Akhiru Zaman did not begin with the recovery of the body of Firaun. No, sir. Akhur is the man started before that. And one of the primary goals of the enemy in Akhir Zaman was the destruction of the Islamic Khilafah. Because once Muslims had the Khilafah, they were a united community. There was no such thing as Algerian nationalism and Moroccan nationalism and Egyptian nationalism and Pakistani nationalism and all that nonsense. Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. We were a united community under a leader. And therefore, we had power. We had power when we were united. And once we remain united with the khilafah, with the khilafah Israel could never have been created. In order to create Israel, they had to destroy the Khilafah. And uh, the city of Constantinople played a significant role in the destruction of Khilafah. How? The Khilafah, the Nabi Muhammad wasalam, left us was in the city in which he was buried, Medina. Today, that city is forgotten. It plays no role in the affairs of the Arabian Peninsula, none at all. The politics of the Arabian Peninsula, the strategic affairs of Jazeera al Arab, what role that Medina plays? Zero. <laughs> It plays no role whatsoever in affairs of the world of Islam. Nothing. Kuala Lumpur plays a more important role than Medina. Medina is forgotten. Umran ubaytil maqdis qarabu yatrib. When Jerusalem would be flourishing, said Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, Medina will be in a state of forlorn desolation. What role does Medina play in world affairs today? Any role at all? None. So first of all, you take the Khilafah out of Medina. Out of Hijaz. So Hijaz is no longer the center of the world of Islam with the Hajj and the Haramain. So they took it to Damascus, uh, Ma'awiyah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then they took it to Baghdad. And then the Fatimids took it to Cairo. And then it was taken to Spain by a breakaway branch of the Umayyah. But it was still Arab. It was still Arab. And Muhammad والسلام, was an Arab. And the early Muslims, the Salaf, they are the ones who said, Khilafah belongs to Quraysh. I didn't say so. And the Ummah agreed with that. This was the 
collective wisdom of the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam that Khilafah belonged to the Quraysh because the Quraysh had uh, control over the house of Allah, the Kaaba. He said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the best of those who came from Ismail alayhi salam were the Kinana. And the best of those who came from the Kinana were the Quraysh. And the best of those from the Quraysh, Banu Hashim. And I am the best of Banu Hashim. <laughs> and so Quraysh had a noble status, a very noble status, as the best of those who had come from Ismail alayhi salam to the Kinana. And then the tragedy occurred. A mysterious tragedy occurred. And Islamic scholarship has to do some homework now to explain it. That the people came out of Central Asia, Turkish people, with a mysterious power. And they were able to defeat the Byzantine Empire in the 13th century. And with that defeat, the Byzantine Empire was now shaking. And then they were successful in conquering Constantinople. And when they conquered Constantinople in the 16th century, I think it was 15... I must... 14 something? 14? 1453, MashaAllah, thank you. This is Masjid Bufran, remember that. 1453. They said, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. لَتَفْتَحَنَّ الْقُسْتَنْتِنِيَ said the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. He's using the name Constantinia. You will most certainly conquer Constantinople. What a wonderful commander will command that army. What a wonderful army that would be, which will conquer Constantinople. And then the claim was made by the Ottomans, the Usmanli, that we are the ones about whom the Hadith is speaking. That uh, Sultan Muhammad Fatih is the man that the Prophet ﷺ prays. They will be listening to the lecture in Turkey. Eh? <laughs> we say no. We say no, you're wrong. The conquest of Constantinople is still to come. And then, having conquered the city, if you go back to my lecture that I delivered at the International Islamic University on the conquest of Constantinople in Akhir Zaman, you'll get all the portions that I'm leaving out in this lecture hmm? about what they did when they conquered the city and so on. And then, with this newfound power, they established what they call an Islamic government and they became Sultan. But then they headed this way for Arabia. And within a hundred years or so they conquered Mecca and Medina. That was their target. So once they conquered Mecca and Medina, they can now make the claim if they want that we are Khalifa, which they eventually did. And then the world of Islam chose to recognize that this was a genuine Khilafa in Istanbul. It was not. The structure was there of Khilafa, but it was a bogus Khilafa. It was a bogus Khilafa. And it meant 
to serve a mysterious mission in the process of the destruction of Khilafah. Because now Khilafah is born from the Arab world for the first time in history. To bring back the Khilafah to the Arab world is not possible. The enemy would not allow it. Would not allow it. And so they held the Khilafah until the forces of Zionism decided now we don't need you anymore. You served us enough. This is strange language that I'm using. The world of Islam is not accustomed to this kind of language. The enemies decided we don't need the Ottomans anymore. They have served us sufficiently. Because during these five to six hundred years that they ruled over Constantinople and Turkey and the other territories of the Ottoman Empire, they did something of crucial importance for Western Europe. They fought war after war after war after war with Russia. So many wars against Russia I can't count. Russia became enemy number one of the Ottomans. And if Turkey is today a member of NATO and will never leave NATO, is because Turkey is afraid of Russia. <laughs> That's why they're in NATO. This is their insurance policy. Because Russia today is powerful. This taking the Khilafah out of the Arab world and setting the stage for the destruction and elimination of the Khilafah is one half of the story. And the other half is the constant attack, brutal attacks, on that part of Christianity that I remarked last night, that there are two branches of Christianity. One is the Eastern Orthodox Christians, who are referred to in the Quran, and there's a whole surah of the Quran named after them. It is Surah to Rum. Everybody knows Surah to Rum. And Allah speaks in a positive way about room in the Quran. Holy but the room. Remember? They have been defeated, but soon they will overcome. Who is room? Who is room? I say room was the Byzantine Empire. If you want to say the room is the Anglo American Israeli NATO alliance and people want to believe that rubbish because that is what it is. I can't help that. Rome is Byzantium, Eastern Christianity. The Roman Catholic Church which just lost its Pope, I believe they lost the Pope. Is Western Christianity and of course I hope they will not mind my saying it. They got to appoint another pope. But for some strange and mysterious reason, a pope always has to be a European. I wonder why. Ever had a Malay pope? Ever had an Arab pope? Huh? Ever had an Indian pope? Ever had an African pope? The Pope always has to be, excuse my language, a white man. That is the bogus part of Christianity. And this is the more authentic part of Christianity. Byzantium. And when the city of Constantinople was conquered, this was the heart of Byzantium, this was the heart of Rome. And then Rome went to Moscow. And the Quran speaks positively about Rome. And the Prophet says that you will make an alliance with Rome in Akhiru Zaman. So what the Ottoman Empire did was to serve the cause of those who wanted to ensure that that alliance never takes place with Rome. And so they attacked these people. They enslaved them. 
they took their sons and converted them to Islam and trained them to become soldiers to serve the Ottoman Empire. Shamelessly! Shamelessly! It is a shameful blot on the history of Islam what they did. To take these little Christian boys, convert them to Islam. Don't come with the nonsense to me that the parents agreed to it and the parents were happy. What nonsense you're telling me? Because of what the Ottomans did, enslaving the women, putting them in the harem, slaves. Today there is so much hatred for Islam, so much hatred for Islam in Eastern Europe, in Russia, in Bulgaria, in Romania, in Greece because of 600 years of Ottoman oppression. And so the alliance with Rome is almost an impossibility today, thanks to the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire played a significant role in Akhirul Zaman. Number one, in setting the stage for the destruction of Khilafah. It's gone. And number two, to prevent an alliance with Rome, which today is Russia. And then came the Arab Spring. I'm not talking about this Arab Spring. <laughs> I'm talking about that Arab Spring a hundred years ago. And that Arab Spring resulted in the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. And that breakup of the Ottoman Empire took place by moving pieces on the chessboard. And Britain played the most important role in the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. The most important role of all is Britain. And then came France to support Britain. The body of Iran was discovered in 1897. And in 1907, we see the first move. Or oh, 1897, the Zionist movement was established. But in 1907 came the treaty, the alliance between Britain and France and Russia. So go home and do your history. Why would Britain and France make an alliance with the traditional enemy, Russia? It was to set the stage. To set the stage for the destruction of the Ottoman Empire. And then, having said, the, having made the alliance with Russia, a few years later, I believe, because it was secret, they then made a deal with Russia. The war is coming, we know that. The Ottoman Empire is going to collapse, everybody in Europe knows that. And they now want to settle who is going to get what. Who is going to get what. And Britain and France offered to Russia, we give you Constantinople. That was the sweets to make the deal work. And Russia was so pleased because that's what Russia wants more than everything else. Because Russia is still so much Christian. And when the war eventually was won, and the Russian troops are moving towards Constantinople, they're close to it. And now Russia is going to get the prize that Russia always wanted, Constantinople. Then the Zionists acted. Because they don't want Russia to get Constantinople. So then you had the Bolshevik Revolution, which was a Jewish revolution. And because of the Bolshevik Revolution, Russia came out of the war. And so the agreement was published about Constantinople. And Russia said, we don't want Constantinople because we're not in the war anymore. And the Bolshevik Revolution eventually took a Christian Russia and transformed it into an atheist Soviet Union. Communism came to destroy Rome. <laughs> Communism came to destroy Rome, to destroy Christianity. Because of the first 
uh, Arab Spring, the Ottomans lost Mecca and Medina. The Arabs were already longing for an Arab Khilafah. If you would study Muhammad Sheikh Muhammad Abdu in Egypt, you would see how this Arab Egyptian intellectual, he was an intellectual, was leading an intellectual movement calling for a return of the Khilafah to the Arab world. So there was for 20, 30, 50 years this ferment in the Arab world of trying to revive the Arab Khilafah because the Ottomans could not be accepted as a proper Khilafah. But once the Ottoman Khilafah was abolished in on the 3rd of March 1924, and then an Arab proclaimed the Khilafah in Mecca, his name was Sharif Hussein bin Ali, yeah, four days later. And I wanted to know, how did he get the news so quickly? March 4th or March 3rd, it was abolished in Constantinople. March 7, he proclaimed his Khilafah. So how did the news reach so quickly? And then I learned, the news is you had something called telegraph. <laughs> so it came by, the news comes by telegraph. Uh, when he proclaimed the Khilafah, Britain would not allow that. France would not allow that. The Zionists would not allow that. No, no, they, they have worked, worked and worked and worked for so long to destroy Islam's Khilafah. So then they turned to Abdul Aziz ibn Saud to perpetrate the greatest betrayal of all. And there are many in Saudi Arabia now who agree with me. And they write to me. Many in Saudi Arabia who agree with me. That this regime, the Saudi Wahhabi regime, play the most crucial role at the end of the drama in destroying Khilafah. They attacked Hussein. Hussein had to flee. They conquered Mecca, conquered Medina, conquered the Hijaz. Now we control the Haramain and the Hajj. No one can claim the Khilafah unless you control the Hajj. We will never claim the Khilafah ourselves. These people who are disgracefully betraying Islam. And we will not allow anyone else to claim the Khilafah. And so that is the end of Khilafah. And Constantinople has played a strategic role in the destruction of the Khilafah. The Ottoman Empire performed the third function that I forgot about. Not only did they conquer the Hejaz and take the Khilafah to Constantinople to set the stage for the destruction of the Khilafah, not only did they wage endless wars of aggression, bloody aggression and oppression of the people of Eastern Europe, particularly Russia, Rum, of whom the Quran speaks positively, Rum and with whom we'll have to make an alliance in Akhiru Zaman. But in addition to that, the Ottoman Empire waged war after war against the Shia in Iran to try to ferment as much as is possible Shia-Sunni strife. Shia-Sunni strife and hatred for each other. And when the first Arab Spring took place, then one client was replaced with another. These two clients were actually sisters of each other. And these two clients continued to perform the same role. When this one ended, this one continued it, namely the Saudi state. The Saudi state, the Saudi Wahhabi state, continued to perform the same function that the Ottomans were performing. The Ottomans were in friendly terms with Britain and France. 
When in one of the wars with Russia, I think in the late 19th century, must be around 1870 something, 80 something, the Russian troops were close to Constantinople in a war. Guess who saved the Ottoman Empire? <laughs> Britain sent her fleet to Constantinople. And when the Russian army saw the British fleet, they could not move. So then they had to make a uh, treaty with, with Turkey. I think it's probably called the Treaty of San Stefano. I may be wrong. But they had to come to a truce, a peace treaty. Because Britain saved the day for the Ottoman Empire. Otherwise, Constantinople would have been gone and the Khilafah would have been gone with it. Hmm? So in the same way that the Ottomans maintained friendly relations with Western Europe and were constantly hostile to Russia and Eastern Europe, so to Saudi Arabia. In the Zionist camp from day one, Abdul Aziz ibn Saud met with the President of the United States of America on board a ship in the Suez Canal. <laughs> 1945 perhaps and entered into such friendly relations with them and just three years later Israel was born and who is the first state in the world to recognize Israel oh yes the same United States of America so Saudi Arabia ended up with mess on its face these are your friends the Quran has prohibited you from maintaining friendly ties with a with a Judeo-Christian alliance. It's there in Surah al maidah And it's time for the ulama in Saudi Arabia, many of whom I understand are listening to our lectures, to recognize that this is the interpretation of the verse and come out and speak against this alliance with the Western world and this hostility for Russia. Now we turn to the second Arab Spring. History is repeating itself. And the second Arab Spring is continuing what the first Arab Spring did. To bring about changes in the Arab world, to bring new governments to the Arab world who would serve, serve the ultimate mission of the Zionists. They want Israel to take over from the United States as the ruling state in the world. And then the Jal will enter into a day which is like a week. And this is what we are seeing before our eyes now. This is where we are in the historical process. You can't deny it that the United States of America is in irreversible decline. You cannot deny it. The United States can no longer function as a ruling state of the world. When the US dollar is in a place in the hospital called the ICU, intensive care unit, <laughs> it's about to die. They don't need the USD anymore. They use it sufficiently. And they use the USD unjustly to rip off mankind and to impoverish, impoverish mankind so you can become filthy rich. Hmm? They use the USD to oppress mankind. And I don't mind if people criticize me. But when a man has said the right thing, I am going to recognize that he said the right thing. It doesn't matter to me who, who is annoying. And Dr. Mahathir of this country, he did raise his voice. And he spoke out against the unjust role of the monetary system and of the US dollar. He did it. And not because you have an election coming up in this country, does it mean that I must be silent on things that I must speak? Oh no, I'm not concerned with your elections at all. What is right has to be spoken. And last night I spoke about Charles de Gaulle and about Dr. Mahathir on this. The United States is in decline. Something has to replace the United States. Our Ilmo Akhirul Zaman, our Islamic eschatology tells us that Pax 
Britannica was emerged for Dajjal in day one and then came Pax America and Dajjal in stage two and finally we come Pax Judaica or Israeli rule over the world <coughs> but the Arab Spring recognizes uh, sorry those who crafted the Arab Spring the second Arab Spring they recognize that in, in order for Israel to replace the United States as the ruling state, Israel will have to come out from behind the hijab and wage great wars. And Israel does not want to wage these wars and appear to the world as an aggressor. I've been saying this for the last, I don't know, 15 years or more. So in order for Israel to wage her great wars, she has to create some cause as bella, some justification. And for that you need the Arab Spring, which will bring Islamic governments to power. And when these Islamic governments come to power, the world has to be presented with the spectacle of Islam re-emerging as a menace to the world. And that would justify Israel's wars as wars to save mankind from these Islamic jihadists, these Islamic militants who want to take over the world and convert all of mankind to Islam. Hmm? And that's where we are now. But I suspect and I share with you my thoughts tonight. This is my suspicion. The Dajjal has some tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> and he has some more work for Constantinople. Yeah. I have said, and this is my opinion, Allah knows best, that the world of Islam is waiting for Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam and I'm getting emails all the time Sheikh, Imam is born yes the Imam is in so and so place I can take you to meet him Sheikh <laughs> the world of Islam is waiting for Imam al-Mahdi and we say Imam al-Mahdi is an Arab not Indonesian not Japanese, not Sundanese, he's, he's an Arab. <laughs> and he's going to come out of Medina, not Jakarta. <laughs> he's going to come to Mecca. And he's going to proclaim himself Imam in Mecca. Hmm? Mecca has never been a Shia city. That does not mean that you never had any Shia living in Mecca. I never said so. What nonsense. Mines is a perfectly correct statement that Mecca has never been a Shia city. This is a perfectly correct statement. And Mecca will never come out to a Shia to recognize him as the Imam. No, that will never happen. Don't be annoyed with me for speaking what is correct. So Imam has to be a Sunni, <laughs> not a Shia. But the Shia say no. Imam al-Mahdi is going to be Shia. And uh, I'm almost certain that the enemy has already groomed an Imam al-Mahdi who will proclaim himself to be Imam al-Mahdi. He'll be Shia. As soon as Israel attacks Iran, I expect that Imam to emerge. And uh, and I say to my Shia brothers, and you are my brothers, I hope you don't be annoyed with me. I am anticipating that the Shias are going to be wild with joy. And like cattle, they will flock to him and accept him. This is indeed the Imam al-Mahdi. And Imran Hussein will be weeping in Kuala Lumpur or in Trinidad. So that's the plan for the Shia. 
But I believe that Jaya has a plan for the Sunni as well. I think there's going to be, you know, with Imam al Mahdi comes the Khilafah. So I think the city of Constantinople is going to see an effort to revive the Khilafah. So we can get another Ottoman Khilafah. <laughs> and someone who is Turkish probably will claim to be Imam al Mahdi. I understand there's somebody already in Turkey claiming to be Imam al Mahdi. But if you look at the Turkish government, the present Turkish government, you can see the pattern, the pattern, that they didn't come to power by accident. Oh no! There was a plan and a design all the way from the United States to bring this party to power in Turkey and to get this party to take control of the Turkish military, something we consider to be an impossible. And there are many Turkish generals in jail now. <laughs> and this government in Turkey fooled me. Because, you know, we accept someone at face value. If you say you are a Muslim, we say you accept it. And you're preaching Islam, we accept you. Until we get evidence to the contrary. So I'm not sorry that I made a mistake. No, I'm glad. But when they did what they did in Libya, then I saw the true face of the Turkish government. That they were not in NATO only to protect themselves from Russia. Oh no! They were up to their neck serving NATO interests. Serving Zionist interests with what they did in Libya to intervene in Libya to send weapons and send men into Libya to overthrow the government in a shameless bloody act shameless bloody act Ramadan shall I remind you it was Ramadan the people had fasted all day long and you evil people you followers of shaitan who say you are waging a jihad eh no jihad, a yankee jihad you choose that moment when the people are breaking their fast to infiltrate your people into Tripoli and then start shooting wildly and you kill 1200 people to sow panic in Tripoli People who have just fasted for the whole day, don't you have any shame? And then the British Prime Minister and the French Prime Minister land in Libya to show their support for the new Libyan regime. And guess who came after them? Yes, shamefully so. I'm telling you to your face, Mr. Prime Minister, shamefully so the Turkish Prime Minister. So then we got the true face of this Turkish government. And what they're doing now in Syria only confirms what we suspected. If a new Khilafah is to be established in Constantinople and someone is to claim to be Imam al-Mahdi and so on, then Turkey has to expand. Turkey has to take over Syria and drive Russia out. The Russian naval base in Syria. Hmm? Turkey, they don't want you in the European Union. You can't get in the European Union. No, they don't want you. Well then, what else? Answer, if we can't get into the European Union, then what we're going to do is become the new Khilafah. And so the Turkish Union now, Turkey expands and Turkey becomes a power in the world of Islam. Turkey already has the most powerful military force in the whole world of Islam. The most powerful military force is the Turkish Armed Forces. And so the Western world, the Zionist world will use this new Khilafah that is coming. This bogus Khilafah that is coming, as bogus as the Shia 
Imam al Mahdi who is coming. Don't be annoyed with me because this is coming. And they will use this new Ottoman Caliphate to get the world of Islam to again bow down to this Khalifa. <laughs> Not me. And they will use this Caliphate to again attack Eastern Europe, Rome, and try to contain Russia. But Akhir Zaman will witness the Malhama. Remember the hadith that I've quoted so often from Sunan Nabi Dawood. Umran uh, Ubayt al Maqdis Kharabu Yathrib. That when Jerusalem is at center stage, flourishing, that's my booklet at the back of Medina. When Jerusalem is at center stage, flourishing, at that time Medina will be in fall on desolation. That's where we are now. Then he went on to say, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he's speaking to Ma'az ibn Jalal, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu. He went on to say to Ma'az, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, Kharabu Yathrib, Khurujul Malhama. At that time when Medina is in forlorn desolation, look for the Malhama. And that's where we are, where we are now. The Malhama is the great war. And that great war will be between the two world powers. You have the Anglo-American Israeli NATO alliance on one side. Who want to rule the whole world and then gave to Israel that rule over the world. And then you have Russia which refuses to bow down. No. Vladimir Putin is a patriot. And this godless Soviet Union has gone into the garbage bin. The Zionists tried something, but it failed. And now Russia is returning to Christianity. That is the strategic reality of this moment. Russia is returning to Christianity. How can you explain that the State University of Moscow which has one of Russia's foremost intellectuals as the head of international relations. This man has so much respect for me. Yes. And they, are, they have contacted me and they want to extend an invitation to me to come and lecture at the State University of Moscow. This is the evidence that Russia is returning to Christianity, Rome is returning. But the Salafis don't listen to me. Oh no, they will not. Russia is returning to Christianity. And Russia will not bow down to the Zionists. And China is a proud civilization. I'm not talking about the Chinese in Singapore. China is a proud civilization. And China will not bow down to the Zionists. No. So this is the Malhama which is coming. When this Malhama comes, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, it will be such a great war that birds flying in the sky will fall down. And I interpret that to mean that nothing will fly anymore. No more aeroplanes, no more fighter aircrafts, no more electronic warfare, no more cruise missiles. And so now warfare will be conducted on the land and on the sea. Russia knows that it's coming. And Russia cannot fight that war. while NATO controls Constantinople. Putin knows that. Every Russian knows that. You cannot survive. You cannot wage that war while NATO controls Constantinople. 
And so Constantinople has a strategic role to play in Akhirul Zaman. This is military science and I am not an expert in military science. Those who are experts in military science, they will e explain to you what I am saying. I am just giving you the contours of the subject. Well then, something is going to happen in Constantinople in Akhirul Zaman. And guess what he said? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Kharabu yathrib khurujul malhama. That when Medina is in forlorn desolation, look for the malhama. But then he went on to say, khurujul malhama fathul constantinia. That the malhama will include the conquest of Constantinople or that after the Malhama, the next thing would be the conquest of Constantinople. Of these two interpretations, my heart tends to the first one. <laughs> that once the Malhama commences, and we are now on the doorstep of that Malhama, that const the conquest of Constantinople will take place soon after. And then the Prophet spoke about an Arab, a Muslim army. <laughs> Tonight I want to say, I don't think anyone will disagree with me, that Russia on its own cannot conquer Constantinople. Russia does not have the land to march to Constantinople. Russia will have to use air power and sea power, but cannot use land power. So if Russia is to conquer Constantinople, Russia will have to get help. And I believe that this is the meaning of the Hadith. La taftahanna al Constantinia, that you will most certainly conquer Constantinople. That a Muslim army will conquer Constantinople. And no Muslim army can conquer Constantinople unless you have a large number of Muslim Turks with you. Turkish Muslims. And so I am suggesting to you that you're going to witness civil war in Turkey. And that civil war can come when the Turkish Prime Minister and President very, very, very foolishly attack Syria. Go ahead and attack Syria. And I say to you, Prime Minister, you're going to see civil war in Turkey. And that civil war in Turkey will lead to Muslims joining with them. And the Prophet said, Wala ni'mal amiru amiruha. He praised the commander of that army. Wala ni'mal jaysh al jaysh. And he praised that army. And I believe there'll be a lot of Kurdish Muslims from Kurdistan. Kurdish Muslims in that army. Remember, what is his name? Salahuddin Salahuddin Ayyubi Yes He was Kurd And lots of Kurds Are going to be in our army And I'm saying to you today in Algeria There will be lots of Algerians in our army And I'm saying to you in Morocco And in Tunisia And in Egypt you also will be in that army, but not as much as the Algerians. Mm -hmm. Libya, unfortunately, is now a NATO country, thanks to those fools who wage a Yankee Jihad. And so we see the conquest of Constantinople breaking the back of NATO. When NATO is no longer in control of Constantinople, only then can the Russian fleet pass through the Bosphorus and enter into the Mediterranean. And that is what Akhirul Zaman is going to witness, whether NATO likes it or whether they don't. Whether the Zionists approve of it or they don't. This is the word of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After the conquest of Constantinople, he said, Fathul Constantinia, 
خروج الدجال It is at this time that Dajjal will now emerge in human form as a young man ruling the world from Jerusalem. But I'm afraid the Malhama is going to destroy perhaps 90% of the world's population. So many of us will not be around to witness what is going to happen after that. Because this is nuclear warfare with thousands of nuclear weapons exploding and perhaps the mushroom clouds from the nuclear weapon explosions will blot off the sunlight and perhaps this is the Dukhan that the Prophet spoke about as one of the signs of the last day what I have done for you tonight is to give you a contour of the role important role, strategic role that Constantinople plays and will continue to play in Akhiru Zaman and suggest to you that this is indeed an important subject for you to study to penetrate and to teach others we are now elderly tomorrow we'll be in our graves and it's time for the younger ones to come up and study Ilmul Akhiru Zaman or Islamic eschatology that the truth which is in Islam might reach the world. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa tuba alayna ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim Ilahi nas tulil firdausi ala wa la aqwa ala naril jahim Allah fahab li taubat فَهَبْلِ تَوْبَةَ وَغْفِرْ ذُنُوبِ فَإِنَّكَ غَافِرٌ